Greetings and peace to all. My name is Jay, and this is Sticks and Stones, where we discuss mental health, substance abuse, and criminal behavior. Today, we're gonna to be talking about federal indictments. And what is a federal indictment? Indictments, indictments, indictments. So, oh, man. Well, I'm here today to tell you what a federal indictment is. Uh, federal indictment is um, a formal federal charge against an individual handed down or up by the grand jury. Uh, the Fifth Amendment requires that the federal crime begins when the federal prosecutor proves beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty. And how they do this is by building evidence against the criminal. Again, if you have a federal indictment, most likely you are guilty. Uh, this evidence can be collected from two months to years. It's presented to a magistrate judge who will decide if there's probable cause to move forward. And then the prosecutor will sit in front of a grand jury that you won't know about and ultimately build an indictment against you. Um, process can take a long time and again if you have a federal indictment against you most likely you're guilty I know this firsthand when a federal indictment begins um, police are working with FBI ATF DEA the prosecutor in that federal district they're building a rock-solid case against you whether it's trafficking drugs, money laundering, carrying guns state to state, blue crime, white crime, you fucking name it. These guys will build a case against you that is so rock solid that 97 to 98% of the cases end up guilty. And people who fight federal indictments in court afterwards rarely win. Now, the unfair part that I believe that the government does is when they're building this case, you have no idea. Your lawyers don't have no idea. Um, it's a very sneaky process because even with the grand jury, it's a hidden grand jury. It's not uh, talked about. It's not there's nothing leaking out so a lawyer can say, hey, they're building an indictment against you. Rarely, rarely does a, can a lawyer find information and say, hey, they're building an indictment against you. Indictments can go down many ways. Um, in my uh, situation, um, it was a state charge at first. Uh, state charge was a trafficking charge. That trafficking charge was investigated by DEA, FBI, whoever it may be, uh, and they built a case that when I caught the charge in March, by November, my lawyer, my, my main state lawyer called me and said he could not represent me, and I need to get a new federal lawyer because I am being indicted and I have to turn myself in. Now, that's the friendly part of getting indicted. When your or the prosecutor notifies your lawyer and says, please turn in your client. Uh, most of the time, you'll get ran down on, and you'll get ran down on very quick um, without knowing nothing. Five o'clock in the morning, and the boys are at your house, and there's a lot of them. DEFCON 5, picked out in your boxes, sprung out on the street, you know, taken downtown, uptown, wherever your neighborhood may be. Um, after you get indicted, you have what they call most of the time they sit you down with with whatever agency you were indicted by whether it was the dea atf or fbi and they do this thing called a proffer agreement now proffer agreement is going to be another another video but I'll, I'll touch on it very quick a proffer agreement basically is they want you to tell them what information you know they want you to snitch on your code of ends Excuse me. They want you to say what you know. This can lead to you being 
bailed at a higher or lower amount of money. This can lead to you snitching, flipping, and becoming a criminal informant. This can lead to you not saying anything and getting bailed at a lot of money. Proffer agreements can go many, many ways. Um, usually it's you, your lawyer, and two agents. Um, contingent on what the situation is, it could be more agents. It's usually done in the courthouse where a judge is two rooms down. And whatever that agreement gets decided on, you go to the judge and they'd say bailed or not bailed. Now, in my case, I was caught with, uh, I will say, an undetermined amount of, uh, let's just say, an undetermined amount of dry goods and cash. And my original state bail was a quarter million dollars, which I made. I got indicted, got called by my lawyer to turn myself in. My lawyer was telling me that, no, Jay, you're not going to get rebelled because you already are out on a quarter million dollars bail. You've been following the restrictions and guidelines that they presented to you. When I went to meet with the DEA agents and my lawyer, um, they expected me to tell them information that I didn't know. My, my situation in the organization I worked with was so compartmentalized that I didn't know what other people were doing. Um, they weren't happy with my answers. I got rebelled again for another quarter million dollars. And I got presented this indictment with 19 counts with two co-defendants I didn't even know because that's what the federal government is going to do in your indictment. They are going to tie you in with everybody that your man and your man's man and man's man has been in contact with. So let's say you sell something to your man and your man has someone else he's selling to. All the crimes that they committed within the time range of the investigation, you are going to get charged with too. Your man man could have sold a brick of heroin and you were selling weed, you're going to be charged with that brick of heroin. This is a very, very sneaky and unfair uh, way that they do things in, in my opinion. Again, it's the federal government. They have a way of doing things in a way of putting you in a position that you cannot win. So please have that lawyer money ready if you're going to start running rackets like that because you're going to need it. You're going to need it when it comes down, down to sentencing. Sentencing is the ultimate decision of what happens to your future. Um, after you get indicted, uh, whether you make bail or not, you're in a pretrial uh, uh, timeline and they will assign to you a pretrial officer. Um, that officer will dictate what you do and what you don't do before your case starts. Cases can start, they can go on for years. These cases can go on for years because they are constantly building a, a, a mountain of hell against you that you cannot fight against. Uh, mine was two to three years before I actually like started going to court and dealing with the bullshit. Um, and again, most of the time you gotta you gotta you gotta cop man because you gotta make a plea agreement and say, I'm gonna take this time. Because if you fight something and they say, hey, we're gonna give you five years, but if you fight it, you're gonna get to 40 years. You take the five years, I'm gonna tell you, because most of the time you're not going to win against these devils and maniacs that, that they are. Again, I don't feel high of the federal government. Um, I, I think they're sneaky. I think they're undermined. They do underhanded stuff. Uh, I will say that I've been in state and federal positions with probation and parole and state is much different than federal. Federal uh, probation and supervised release officers actually want you to do good uh, because it makes them look good to their you know, bosses or state, you know, they want, they want you to lose so you can be locked in the system. Uh, indictments can come at any angle, any time. Uh, most of the time, you again won't know that they're happening. Um, your spidey senses might be going off, but you're not going to know.
you're not going to know what they're doing and the case they're presenting against you. They're not, it's such a tight sealed situation that these prosecutors and, and these judges and juries are doing. You're not going to know. It's not like you you go rob a bank and you get arrested and you go to jail and it's different. It's them seeing that you're doing something and someone gets tipped off, uh, an informant, a situation looks out of hand and they see something's going on and they start investigating. They start taking pictures, they start checking bank records, they start, you know, checking airplane tickets. They, they, they're doing research that only God could do to build this case against you. And when they come to indict you and hand you that indictment with 20 charges and you really only committed two of them, but you're getting wrapped into everybody and everybody else's charges, it's a very, very scary feeling. They want to put the fear of God in you, so you talk. That's what they do. And it's up to you if you want to talk and you want to give them information that's on you if you want to stick to your guns and fight the case you'll probably lose and do the max time most of the time people you know take a plea agreement i took a plea agreement there's no way i would have won my case i took a plea agreement but this plea agreement took years in the making to set up and to agree on between both parties. Again, I was very fortunate that my lawyer was and had relations and a friendship with the judge. My case was down south. I'm from New York, obviously. Uh, my case was in South Carolina, a whole different ball game. But, you know, it really doesn't matter what state you're in. It's all the same shit. So with that being said, Please don't commit crime. Don't get indicted. Crime doesn't pay if you don't know how to weigh the situation at hand and do it the right way. Um, I just advise you to stick to your guns and live a normal life, man. I gotta tell you, because no one wants to be behind that wall. Nobody wants to have to get ran down on by a bunch of feds at five in the morning and you cannot see your kids and your wife and your family for a long time. And your 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 pockets and your bank account when everything is taken and you're paying tens to 20 to hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawyer fees, it's a fucking mess, please, I beg of you. With that being said, my name is Jay. This is Sticks and Stones. We discuss mental health, substance abuse, and criminal behavior. Peace to all. Take care.